Welcome back to the Stephen I Show. Filmmaker Julian Bullock's latest project is a featured film entitled A Sense of Purpose, Fighting for Our Lives, which focuses on veterans, military sexual assault, and PTSD inspired by their stories. Tonight she joins us to tell us more. Please help me welcome Julian Bullock. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Now, listen, I was reading your bio, and it says under your name, from Crack Street to Wall Street, to Hollywood. It says a former homeless prostitute, street thug, high school dropout, and teenage mother, to college educated author, professional speaker, fitness guru, and award winning winning filmmaker. That's a lot. That's <laughs> so a lot. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, basically, I grew up with my mother. I'm African American. I grew up with my mother and my siblings, and my stepfather, who happened to be white, he was okay. also in Italian mafia. Oh. Uh, so he raised me since I was two, and then when he died, uh, when I was a teenager, my mom got married to another guy, and he was very abusive. Okay. So how I got on the streets was, you know, I was a black belt in martial arts, and I was tired of him beating on her because he was very abusive, and then I jumped in it, and I used my martial arts. I broke his nose. Wow. I thought my mom would be happy that I jumped in, but she right. was upset that I beat up her husband and she kicked me out the house oh my gosh so I was homeless at 15 I was homeless so I did I was walking the streets and um you know doing the things homeless people do and trying right. to survive and and then I remembered how to survive from growing up with my stepfather who was in the mob and mm-hmm. I did what I had to do to, to survive so that part right. of that came through um prostitution and you know doing what you got to do you got to survive right 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 unfortunately so how did it change for you? What was the turning point? Uh, I got pregnant. <laughs> right. Um, and I said, um, well, I wanted to provide a better life for my child. Um, mm-hmm. So I knew I had to get off the streets. I had to kick drugs. And I had to try to clean my act up so I could be a, you know, a mother. Right. I was a kid myself. But this is my thoughts. <laughs> that right, I yeah. Do better. Mm-hmm. So I knew education was the only way to do that. So I I got clean. I got off the streets. I got clean. And um, you know, when I had my child, you know, I tried to go. I went back to school and I tried to do what I had to do to um, graduate high school, so I could go to college and do you know some things that I had in my mind. My goals was always to be a a writer um, and a filmmaker. So right. I had to push forward through that all the time. I had to keep that in the back of my mind that this is my dream, so I have to keep pushing forward. Wow. And now you're the CEO and president of Julian Bullock Enterprises, LLC. Yeah. <laughs> That's the story. Yeah. And I want to let the listeners know they can learn more about your story by reading your memoir, Here I Stand, which you released yeah. in 2012. Okay. Right. I, I just thought that was fascinating because I know we're here to promote uh, your feature film, but when I read that, I was like, we got to talk about that. <laughs> you got to talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's, so a, that's, a, that's a different movie. <laughs> right, that's a different movie, right. right. <laughs> well, tell us about uh, A Sense of Purpose, fighting for, our li- fighting for Our Lives. What was the inspiration behind this? Uh, about uh, four or five years ago, I, I was looking at uh, Sports with Brian Gumbel, and they were doing a story on veterans who actually did mixed martial arts to help mm-hmm. them cope with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, well, I'm a mixed martial arts fighter, so I was like, yeah. wow, that'd be a great story, and I'm also a veteran. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, oh, that'd be a fantastic story. So I started doing research so I could be thorough and right. <laughs> writing the stories. So I interviewed a lot of the veterans who had PTSD. And interesting enough, I found out that a lot of the, P- the veterans had PTSD because they had been sexually assaulted. Why oh, they wow. were in the military. Okay. I'm like, oh, this is a, this is a better story. Right. <laughs> you even thought, right? <laughs> yeah. So I said, well, let me change directions. And I rewrote the script to include that aspect of what happens because I, I didn't know it was so prevalent. It's like an mm-hmm. ep- epidemic. Wow. Um, and so I wanted to bring that out to the forefront so people can be more aware. So I exactly. think that's why it's the story. Yeah. So what was something that shocked you, of course, it being an epidemic, I'm sure, in itself, but what else shocked you in doing your research for the movie? What shocked me was that the, the, the people that are, the, the people that are being the violators, they, most of the time they don't get, you know, they don't get convicted. They don't even get arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, even once a person who's been the victim, you know, wants to press charges. And that's because the chain of command in the military is if 
let's say you're the rapist and you're buddies with the commanding officer, well, he's not going to do anything. You're buddies. Right, right. So that person that's been raped, sexually assaulted, has no recourse. I mean, they can't get out. It's not like if a woman or a guy gets raped in civilian life, they can go to the police. Right. They get a lawyer, you know, all the charges. It's not that way in the military at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. It's like their own kind of rules and own kind of oh, protocol. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. And then, you know, then the person, like, again, who tries to speak up will get retaliated. They'll, you know, they'll, you can lose your rank. Mm. You'll be threatened. threatened. Um, it, you know, court-martial. You, you're, the, you're the victim, but you're the one going to get court-martial. Right. So, That's crazy. You know, a lot, most of them don't report. 80% don't report it because they're like, they don't want that to happen. Right, exactly. You know, to the, and so we know what happens just from what we've seen in the news in previous years. This happens a lot to women. Does this happen to men too? Yeah, it happens more to men than women because there's more men that serve in the military. Wow. So wow. It, it does happen more to men. And, of course, they, they're more, even more reluctant, reluctant yeah. to say anything than women because they're men. And how do, you, how do men get raped? You know, but if it's – a, you know, a few guys going after one guy, it's quite easy, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. Of course, yeah. You wouldn't know this. What else do you want people to know after watching uh, this, the feature film? You know, basically that they need to get more more involved and, and try to understand that um, PTSD, when the veterans come home, people don't understand why they're acting the way they are. Right, yeah. Um, they just don't understand. And you really can't. I mean, even if you you haven't been sexually assaulted, just the fact that you, if you served in Iraq or Iran or, or Afghanistan or somewhere, a war zone area, mm -hmm. um, the, the horrors that you see every day, um, you know, Americans, when you come back home, your family, friends, you know. Can't they relate can't, to that. No. They can't relate to that. So it's difficult for, for the veterans to assimilate back into society because, the, the families don't understand. You don't want to tell them what's going on because it's gory. You know, there's a lot of gory stuff that went on over in war. Yeah. It's a war. It's war. Yeah. So what? that makes it more difficult, you know, for mm -hmm. them to, to cope with PTSD and, and, and getting through the struggles that they're getting through. What would you say the best, uh, you know, so way to help? Would it be counseling, therapy, that kind of thing for veterans? You know, it's... It's, it's different ways to help different people. Like I said, they, a lot of people do the MMA. That helps mm -hmm. them. They have the equestrian uh, with the horses. That has proven to be very therapeutic for uh, veterans. Um, oh. You know, whatever helps that veteran, because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. It's not always just giving them, put, putting them on drugs and medicating them. Right. You want them to yeah. be healthy. You don't want them to have another problem, which would be the drugs. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, yeah, so you want to find alternatives that are healthy for the veterans to help them cope and assimilate back into society and be healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually, everything. Do you feel like we as a country do enough for our, our veterans when they return from war? We, no, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I'm a veteran, and I'm right. still saying it's horrible. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, they don't get the help they need from the VA. And I understand, I mean, you know, come on, VA is government. They don't get enough funding. We know that. Right. Um, yeah. They don't have enough therapists and people to help them. So a lot of them fall through the cracks. The veterans fall through the cracks. So, you know, that's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate, which is another reason why I tried to do a movie like this, to bring more awareness. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, hopefully it will help have a dialogue. I mean, I, I don't know with the climate of the politicians now. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, so. Um, <laughs> that's another story. There's um, another story, right. <laughs> um, so, you know, but, you know, as a as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, as a writer, you know, I, I try to do projects that will enlighten people, educate mm -hmm. them, and entertain them, because it is a feature film. It's not a documentary. It's a feature film. Right. So, you know, it gives me more leeway that I can have more uh, of a storytelling element. A documentary, you have to, like, really stick to, you know, just interviewing, you know, the, the people who were involved with PTSD and all that. But this right. is a story with just actors and... Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very complicated story. It, it's not just black and white. Um, right. You know, and it's a lot of twists and turns in the film that people really going to have to pay attention to or they're going to lose their way because I, I put a lot of twists <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. It makes people stand on their feet, their toes. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> so when you, when you get an idea as a filmmaker, you get an idea and you say, okay, I want to bring this to life, what is your process? 
My process is I have to write a title. I can't write a screenplay without my title. So okay. if I don't have the title first, I can't even get started. So mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. that's just me. Every writer has their own way of doing right. things. But for me, that's it. Because to me, the title helps me understand where the story is going. Okay. So once I have the title, then I do an outline. You know, it's a, it's a whole process. You know, I, I do, um, you know, I'm a script doctor as well, so when people send me scripts and, you know, I tell them, I try to teach people how to properly format it, how, properly how to, you know, the do's and the don'ts of screenwriting and everything because this is what I do. So, right. Um, and, you know, because of me, I say, you need to start with the title. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and what kind of genre, what kind of genre you want to mm-hmm. do, and you got to make sure that you're strong in that genre. Like me, I will never write a sci-fi movie because I'm not strong in that genre. So I okay. would never, you will never see that happening from me. Yeah. Um, so you got to find out what, what strengths you have as far as with writing. If you know that you love your romantic comedies, then that's your thing. That's another thing mm-hmm. I would never write. That's not, I'm not strong in that, that area. Right, right. So you have right. to stick to what you're strong in and then develop it from there. So is, when does this come? I know it comes out this year. Is it already out? No, no, we're still uh, we're we're finishing up the editing process. Then we'll hit all the film festivals: Sundance, Cannes, Oh, perfect, uh, Tribeca. You know, to run that normal independent filmmakers yeah. make. You know, that's how they how we do. And um, and then from there, you usually get a distribution deal from one of the the people that you you know meet that one meet of the there. festivals. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's usually how it works. And then it goes, hey, well, the way things are going now, um, you know, with Netflix and all everything. Oh, else, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't know which way. I don't know which way I want to go. I'm going to go with the best offer, you know. How has Netflix changed the game for an independent film uh, maker? Well, you know, you, you, it used to be like a stigma that you say, oh, it's going straight to video, but that's not mm-hmm. the case anymore because no. Netflix has money. It does. When you, <laughs> when you see the big stars, like Scorsese just did a um, – is doing a movie, right, with um, – uh, Joe Pesci and uh, uh-huh. Robert De Niro and all those. He's doing it, and they they like, they got a hundred million dollars to do that film See? from Netflix. See? Yeah, yeah, Netflix <laughs> got money now. Um, <laughs> they got they got some money. Uh, Will yeah. Smith just just did a project, another hundred million dollar project. So it's not taboo anymore. No. Uh, people are mm-hmm. looking to do that because uh, they have the money, and right. you definitely you know why not go that route if they can do. Um, just as good as a theater can do. Exactly. And don't you have more of a sense of uh, freedom or, you know, you're not so confined confined in your project, would you say? On yeah, that definitely. Way? You know, mm-hmm. they, give you, uh, they give you a bit more leeway. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I just read the other day that um, uh, Zuckerberg is going to do it. same thing on the Facebook. He's, they're going to oh, do wow. movies. Wow. And um, they're looking for – projects that they can fund for like three million a piece and i was like what Ooh. what's happening <laughs> <laughs> you better get to work <laughs> <laughs> that was for like yeah i was like wait a minute what's going on so right, even right. see this is what's going cool. amazon has done it amazon has mm-hmm. picked up uh started their own um studio and, and distribution company so this is this is the future so that's, that's awesome that's awesome everybody don't want to go and pay the higher prices at theaters and Mm-mm. Sitting in the theater, you know, everybody doesn't want to do that. They want the comfort of their own home, and yeah, that's how I prefer it. That's how I prefer it. Yeah, so I, I, I don't mind. <laughs> what right. be the best deal? I'm gonna go with. Yeah, you know, so. I'm, I'm not mad at you at all. <laughs> you have any, anything else that you're working on currently, or are you just trying um, to get this done? And no, working on the next uh, next film is a psychological thriller. It's called A Cup Full of Crazy. Okay, <laughs> I like the title. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the title. Gotta uh, have the title. Um, yeah. So it's a couple of crazy, and it, it 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 is a psychological thriller, and that, again a lot of twists and turns and that as well, because that's that's what my strong suit is: psychological mm-hmm. thrillers and dramas. So this is what I do. So I can't wait! I can't wait to uh, learn more about that one. You gotta come back and uh, tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I would be looking, be happy to do that. <laughs> well, listen, Julian. Tell us, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tell us where people can learn more about you and learn more about uh, this uh, feature film. Yeah, they can go to um, they can go to Jillian Bullock um, dot com to see anything about myself and a sense of purpose movie dot com to learn more about the movie. You know, either one that if they can get a hold of me. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we'll be right back.